Good evening, Michal. Nice to meet you. And uh, uh, let me, before I, I, uh, I give the voice to, to Michael Mosbrugger, the vice chairman of the Camptal uh, DAC, let me say a few words about the tasting. Uh, 12 wines, as you, as you all know, as, as you got, I believe, you get the, the, the tasting cards. Uh, do not forget, traditionally, do not forget this is very this device uh, uh, this device is very useful do not forget to take some photos for us uh, michel will, will appreciate that and myself also photos of your groups and yes if you have some questions write on the chat uh, yeah something else uh, 12 wines uh, uh, and an introduction made by done by uh, michel mosbrugger so, Michel, yeah, this is the second. This is the, this is the second tasting with uh, Kamptar wines this year, yeah, and uh, I think it's your it's the third time with you, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Piotr. Uh, I would like uh, to greet everybody uh, here from uh, the Kamptal area uh, in behalf of uh, the. Comité Interprofessionnel uh, in, uh, in the Kamtal area. And uh, before we start the tasting, I would like uh, to give you a very brief introduction into the Kamtal area. And therefore, I have uh, prepared a few slides that I would like to share with you. I will send Piotr uh, a PDF with all the slides uh, that he can pass on to you after the tasting. Uh, so, if you uh, would like to, to have a quick view into that, uh, then you always have the, the possibility. Now, let's start. So, you should have uh, now my screen shared. Um, well, very briefly, uh, you know, uh, here this is a, a picture of Austria. Uh, you know that the biggest part of Austria is covered by the Alps. Uh, therefore, winemaking is basically here in the eastern part of Austria. And uh, the Kamtal area is here in the northern parts in the province of Niederösterreich. And uh, so uh, when we are having a a deeper look into the province of Niederösterreich, you see that uh, we have here the Appalachians along the Danube. Uh, the Danube is coming from Germany, passing here through Austria, departing via Slovakia. And uh, the, the Danube regions uh, is somehow recalled as the sweet spot for Grüner Veltliner and Riesling production in Austria. Now, when you're looking uh, to this map of the Danube uh, regions, you see that uh, the whole structure of this area is a valley landscape. That means you have the main valley of the Danube, and then you have the side valleys of the Danube. You have the valley of the Krems River, you have the valley of the Kemp River, and then you have the valley of the Trisen River. Now, until the 1960s, uh, this area used to be united under the name of Wachau. It was then split up in the today's appellations, as you would find them. And here I have a few pictures of these appellations, uh, starting with the Wachau Valley, uh, so the, the upper part uh, of, uh, of the Danube region, the most western part. Then you see this is the, the valley of the Tal. Uh, then the valley of the Krems Tal, and uh, here we have a picture of Heiligenstein and the Kamtal. So this is basically where the Kamtal is located, and uh, uh, when we're looking into the history of this area, uh, then we have uh, a few developments that have been marking the today's structures. So first of all, there's the Roman Empire. Uh, you see the Danube has been serving as the northern border of the Roman Empire, but after the third century after Christ, uh, it was allowed also in the provinces to grow wine. 
And uh, this is marking the beginning of some severe developments towards uh, the most significant wine regions in Europe. It's the beginning of uh, German winemaking, it's the beginning of French winemaking, and uh, also it made a big impact actually into the Danube uh, regions. The second most important uh, development was the time uh, between the Middle Ages to the time of secularization, so the French Revolution, where monks have been the biggest uh, supporter of wine growing in Europe. And there's a very simple reason behind, because uh, monks were in these days some of the only ones who could read and write, and therefore they were the ca carriers of scientific research. So monks were trying to find out the best places to grow wine. They tried to improve the grape varieties. They tried to improve winemaking. And uh, this is the, the reason why uh, monastic, uh, monastic work was so important over a long period within Europe. Also, uh, the Danube region was heavily influenced uh, by monastic activities. And still today, you find uh, monasteries in Austria, uh, in contrary to France and Germany, where due to the outcomes of the French Revolution, monasteries were privatized or eliminated. In Austria, we, uh, we had a very Catholic emperor's house with the Habsburg family. And this is the reason why we still maintain quite a rich monastic life in Austria, with all kinds of congregations, from Benedictines to Cistercians, Augustines, and they are still carriers of, uh, of winemaking until today. Uh, if you are interested more in details on Austrian history and uh, wine history, there's a publication that, was, uh, that came out uh, two years ago, Wine in Austria. I can really can recommend there. Uh, there's quite, uh, quite interesting and a lot of uh, stories about Austrian wine. Uh, and different aspects about Austrian wine and all its developments. So this is something that I can uh, really recommend. Now, today, Kamtal wine's culture is dominated by family estates. Um, and uh, these families, they, have, they are quite aware about uh, history. They are quite aware about the traditions uh, of Austrian wine culture. But also, you know, we are eager to go new ways um, to have a look into um, to new possibilities, to new developments. Uh, and I will say a few things about that a little bit later on. But before, um, before that, I would like to say a few words about geology. Uh, you can see here on this map, uh, geology is quite diverse here within the valley. Uh, you see here, this is the valley of the Camp River coming down from the north. And uh, as you can see, we are there are quite some different geological structures. But we are differentiating between three main structures here in the area. So first of all, it's crystalline rock, uh, sandstone and conglomerates like Heiligenstein. Then we have loess, um, deeper soil um, and uh, perfect for Grunewaldina and tertiary structures uh, like uh, Danube sedimentation structures, uh, which is uh, quite important for certain parts of the area. Uh, crystalline rock, uh, as you can see here in this picture, Loess, uh, I have a picture here of Loess uh, here uh, in uh, the vineyards of Langenlois. And then uh, these are tertiary structures uh, looks a little bit like in the Rhone Valley. Uh, we have vineyards that are based on these feast-sized river pebbles like uh, the Galais Rollet in, in, in France. So um, in these uh, structures, uh, it's quite interesting to grow some red wines. Uh, grape varieties, uh, we're looking to about 80% white wine production, 20% red wine production. And uh, here quite in the white wines, quite dominant Grüne Veltliner and Riesling, which counts for about 60% uh, of the overall production. And then the rest is mixed up in different grape varieties, Burgundy grapes, uh, Chardonnay, uh, white Burgundy, um, and uh, a, few, a few aromatic grape varieties like Muscat, uh, like Tramina, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. 
Um, but these are more or less specialities of uh, different uh, uh, of different binaries. Uh, looking to uh, the structures here, you find uh, vineyards based on terraces, which is uh, which are vineyards that are very dry, high mineralization in the soil, ideal for riesling production. And on the other side, you find vineyards based on less on clay, deeper soils, vineyards with good water uh, production, ideal for Grüner Veltliner uh, production. Now, looking to the climatical situation, you can see uh, we are located uh, we are located here on the continental side of Europe. Uh, we have on one side uh, a cool influence from the west and the north. Uh, rain normally comes uh, either from the west, sometimes also from the south. So if we have an, an, uh, an Adriatic low, then we also can have some precipitation over Hungary. And then quite important, the Pannonian Plains, which brings us the warm element, uh, which brings us maturity um, and, uh, and the ripeness uh, for our vineyards. Uh, here you see a few comparisons in precipitation. Uh, we have an average precipitation of about 500 milliliters a year. Uh, in comparison, the Mosul is looking to about 800, Burgundy also between 750 and 800. Annual sunshine um, is we have quite a lot of sun uh, with 2,100 hours in comparison to 1,800 in the Mosul and 1,850 in Burgundy. And average temperatures are about nine degrees here. Mosul is quite a bit lower and Burgundy is quite a bit uh, warmer actually than here the, the Kamtal area, which explains that we are harvesting Pinot Noir, for example, about two to three weeks later than in, in Burgundy. Um, what is quite important actually to understand the Danube area and all the appellations in the Danube area is the overall structures. Uh, we, you do not have to forget that we're always talking about valley situations. Now, talking about valleys, uh, you're starting at a lower end in the valley and the more you go up in the valley, the more you gain in altitude. And the more you gain in altitude, uh, the cooler it gets until it's getting that cold that you reach the end of the winemaking zone. So that means that all these appellations here in the Danube uh, area are always working up to the limit of the winemaking uh, zone, uh, which is in the Wachau area here behind Spitz, in the Spitzer Graben. So this is here the end of the winemaking in the Wachau area. In Kremstal, it's uh, about Senftenberg, which is marking the end of winemaking. In the Kamtal area, it's about uh, Schönberg and Stiefen, uh, where you find the end of the winemaking zone. In the Treisental, at about Inzersdorf, which is the end of uh, where you can produce wine. So this is always something that you should have in mind, uh, that the climatical areas within the appellations are quite severe. This is why I'm always saying when we're asked what is the difference between Kamtal, Kremstal, Kreisental, Wachau, I always say that, you know, I think that the differences within the appellations are sometimes more significant than the differences between the appellations. Now, here I'm already coming to the appellation system. The appellation system is quite simple. We're differentiating between three categories of wine. So there are the, the regional expressions, the regional wines, then the village wines. Uh, we are looking to 12 designated villages in the Kamtal area. And then we have the single vineyards or Ried. Uh, you know that in Austria, it's obligatory to indicate a single vineyard with the term of Ried. Ried de definitely means basically Cru. And uh, it's easy to remember. It's uh, like Riedel, like the glass producer without the L. So this is how you remember. And uh, it's obligatory to indicate a single vineyard uh, in Austria with the term Ried. So it's always Ried, Lamm, Ried, Heiligenstein, Ried, Käferberg, Ried, uh, Steinsetz, and so on. So this is how you easily can identify a single vineyard on an Austrian label. Uh, so there's, these are, you know, this, these are labels, uh, Kamtal, for example, or Langenlois, uh, or Riedgrub. Uh, so these would be labels that you would find 
uh, and indications that you would find on, on, on Camtal uh, wines in the different segments. Um, we are uh, a very short sentence to vineyard classification. We're also working uh, in the area on a vineyard classification system. This is currently on a private level, um, but uh, we are probably getting next year a law that allows us to work on a vineyard classification system on a legal level. So this is something that is quite new. Um, let's see what uh, we get out of that. Uh, I'm not going more into these questions. Uh, this is, uh, uh, but just to know that there is a, uh, a classification system also that is applied here in the area that is differentiating between Premier Cru and Grand Cru. Um, but uh, I'm not uh, saying much more about this. Uh, specialties is uh, what are uh, specialties you would find as well in the Kamtal beside the typical wines of origin here in the area. Uh, there is sparkling. Uh, Langenlois became in the recent years kind of the epicenter of uh, quality sparkling production in Austria. So some of the most significant sparkling producers are located in Langenlois and the Kamtal area. So this is uh, quite an important uh, part of the speciality part. Um, then there are quite some producers who uh, have as a speciality red wine. Uh, Rosé, uh, you know, when it comes to the red wines, uh, quite a big and big part actually of the uh, red wine production is going into Rosé wines. Um, but there are also some really fine Pinot produ producers here in the Kamtal area. Um, and producers that are concentrating on the Pinot family, so Pinot, Saint Laurent and Zweigelt. So this is the, the red wines. Then you also find some very good red, uh, sweet wines. And then uh, we also have uh, quite a bunch of producers that are producing uh, modern style wines, uh, natural orange. Um, as I said in the beginning, producers here are quite open to new developments, new styles in the world of wine. Uh, so experiments or partly also specializing on these segments. Uh, so this is something that we will also find here uh, in this area. Now, I think that's uh, so far it uh, when it comes as an introduction into the area. And I would like to pass on now to Bernd Baumgartner, my uh, colleague here in Goebbelsburg, and uh, to present uh, his wine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much. It was really interesting, as it always is, your, your lectures. And now, yes, we are waiting for Bernd. Bernd, hello. Are you with us? Hmm? No, it's not Bernd. Yes. Hello, Bernd. Good evening. We don't hear you, but we can see you, unless you're blue. Hello? Hello, yes. Hi. Hi. You. Do you want to start with a movie, or do you want to start with a photo, or just... Uh, please, just there? please, we start with a photo, please. Uh, okay, of, of, we start with a photo. Only okay, from, so, a, from a bottle. So we start with uh, the tasting, first wine, Reed Geisberg and Bernd. Hello. Hello together. Uh, hello together. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Bernd Baumgartner from winery Baumhaus Weine. It's in English Treehouse Wines. We are situated in Goebelsburg, uh, nearby Langenlois, which is uh, the biggest wine city in Austria. And we are producing wine from about 20 hectare vineyards, mainly Grüner Wettliner and uh, Riesling. We are two brothers already as children. We loved watching the nature whenever we had time to spare. We climbed into our treehouse, took our spy glass and spent hours looking at the Kamptal. We also enjoyed being at the raised height together with our father. When we were silent enough, we were able to watch the game browsing. Up there, we felt like a part of nature. This emotion of our childhood increased to a real mission. As wine growers, we try more than ever to understand nature. Uh, we want to know what nature is, what it needs and what it's able to give. 
This, is on, this only works when we watch nature intensively to better understand it and to merge with it finally. Therefore, we are still sitting in our treehouse, symbolically looking at the Kamtal to prepare the ground for our special wines, our treehouse wines. That's the reason. And uh, our treehouse wines, uh, we have uh, categorized in uh, the taste pyramid. Uh, Piotr, maybe we can have the video. We prefer to divide our wines according to taste to the taste principle. Uh, this makes it easier for you to choose the right wine. Each category has its own label, its own treehouse. And now you can look at the video. Uh, there are the taste. This is the taste pyramid. And there we have four categories. The first category is the one tree category, which is the which are the wines which are fresh and fruity, they have slight and aromatic wines, drinking in the first three years. The second category is the two tree category which is the spicy and medium body category. Uh, these wines are spicy, medium body and classic wines in Kampal. And the third category, there is the three trees category. It's the category uh, with the strongly and aromatic wines and for the single vineyards, yes. And it's also the category we have to taste today wine we have to taste today is from this category. And now we're looking about the three category, three three category, and on the top there is one category uh, in the sky, three houses in the sky. It's uh, the top wines. We produce these wines not every year, especially in years uh, which are wonderful and wines which are very great and be wonderful. Yeah? Thank you, Prof. Piotr, for the view. Thank you. So, this is the taste pyramid of our winery. And, uh, Piotr, please, can we have the uh, Geisberg Grüner Berliner? Ah, wait a minute. I hope I hope you have understand all with the music. <laughs> Sorry for the music. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't turn it off, unfortunately. Uh, the the wine uh, we have to taste today is a uh, Grüner Vetliner 2020. Uh, from Kamana Geisberg, village is Kamtal, and uh, single vineyard is Geisberg. It's a very uh, proud uh, single vineyard in, in, in Kamtal. It's very famous for full bodied uh, Grüne Wettliner and also Riesling. In the, in, on the top of Geisberg, there is more Riesling, and, 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 the, and the ground on this, uh, is, is more Grüne Wettliner. And this wine is a uh, very strong, uh, full-bodied uh, Grüner Wettliner. It's uh, peppery, spicy, and it's very good to mature. We we uh, put this wine in uh, 500 liters oak barrels uh, to mature for a half to one year, and after this we fill this up in in in, in the bottle, and it's 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 a special. It's the top uh, single vineyard Grüner Wettliner uh, from the Baumhaus Weiner, yeah. So it's it's dry, it's it's complete dry, and uh, the acid is very low, and it's a wine uh, for up to ten years to 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 maturing. It's it's very it's very fine and very clear. Uh, you have. 
a little descri description from uh, for you and uh, I hope it uh, tastes good. So thank you very much for uh, talking about to you and I hope uh, it's it smells and tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Bernd. Thank you. Uh, sorry for the music once again. Uh, uh, but tell me the uh, the retail price in Austria because you do not have an importer. I don't have an importer. Yes. Yeah. The retail... And the retail price of this wine in Austria? Uh, More or less. Thirteen euros. Thirteen euros. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 you were the first, but you you did it really well, really good. Uh, you 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 say the retail price. Oh, sorry, uh, it's a little bit. This was the the pr the price for the for private. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's the yes. More or less the level. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, any, uh, if you want to make some comments, please write on the chat. Bernd will stay with us for a while. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank and you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And now this is Christian Nastl. Christian Nastl, if he's with us. Christian. Hello. And the second wine. Steinmaster. Hi, everybody. Hi. Yeah. Good. Right. Good. Uh, so, uh, Christian, five minutes go on, or six minutes. Perfect. Thanks, Piotr. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kamp second Kampal tasting uh, in the online version of this year. My name is Christian Nastl. I'm the head of Winery Nastl here in Langelös in Austria. We are a family-run winery, Yeah, a nice family picture here in our garden. We also run a Heurigen, so everybody who's going to Austria in any time soon, you're more than welcome to visit us at the Heurigen. We're serving really, really good wines, and as far as my mother is responsible for the food, she's serving great food as well. Um, we work on about 15 hectares of vineyards here in Langenlois, uh, divided on about 30% are on the more northern side, the more primary rock side of Langelois, and the 70% are more southern, more towards Krems, which is the Lös side and which makes usually a little bit smoother wines. Uh, the wine I'm presenting to you today is called Rich Steinmastel. <clears throat> For everybody who was with us in spring, this time that time we had Ried Kittmannsberg, that is more smooth. And for this wine, you will have a totally different experience. The vineyard is situated. Um, thanks, Piotr, for the nice slide of the Ried. Uh, Ried Steinmassel is rather small. It's around 23 hectares with uh, terraces on it that you can see really, really nice on the first picture up there. Uh, the vineyard is a little bit more in the north of Langeles, so we're getting some more cooler winds and some more cooler breezes from the north down there. Um, this is probably our best and greatest vineyard around there because we have on the one hand Gruner Vetlina, the other side is planted with Riesling and we're producing single vineyard wines from both varieties and they are turning out to need some more time in terms of development but they are really really great to show what Langelois and what our wines are capable of. Um, in the glass, you got vintage 2020. Uh, it was, in terms of the vintage, we've said it's like a vintage, like in old times. So we had a rather late harvest. We had rather high uh, or high content in terms of acidity. And it took some longer to harvest this in general. Um, to everybody, I'd like to say cheers with Rich Steinmassel. It's not the typical smooth, easygoing Grüner Vetliner. I would say this is a little bit more challenging to taste because you have a really, really straightforward Grüner Vetliner that is not too broad on the palate, but it's a perfect example of a primary rock Grüner Vetliner from Langenlis. Um In case you have any more questions or anything else, Edwin, cheers as well. 
um, just drop me a line in the chat or send me an email. And I'm not going to use my whole time. I'm going to fast forward to the next one. So, yeah, again, thanks for having us. Enjoy your evening with, I think, 12 really, really outstanding wines from Kamtal. And, yeah, Piotr, thanks for organizing everything. And for Thank you. Thank you. Tell me, Christian, uh, the price. The price. Uh, retail you. price for this one is seven ninety. Seven ninety. Yep. Okay. Okay. And the uh, the total production of this wine? Uh, oh. It's about one thousand five hundred liters. So it's like the third turn of harvest. So for the first, we are harvesting some not so ripe grapes. The second is for the village wine for our Langenlös Grüner Wettliner. And the last turn of harvest on those vineyards is the single vineyard where we have really, really low production mm. at the end. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Christian. Stay with us, please. Uh, any course. questions? <laughs> Thank you. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Any comments? Do I see anything? Uh, no, not for... not for now, I think. Not for now, but let's let's see what's gonna happen. Uh, okay, and uh, and now and now Rudy Rabel, Rudy Rabel from Weingut Rabel. Rudy, are you with us? Hello, Rudy. No, Rudy, with us. Uh, how did you like? Ah, oh, Rudy is coming. Yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. It's uh, the the situation is you have to give it free, and then I have to to open my camera and the micro. Hi, <laughs> understand. Hi. Hi, Hi, Rudy. So, Hi, six it's, minutes for you. Six minutes for me. I I yeah. will give my best. I will give. Perfect. Best. Perfect. Um, long story in in a few words. Uh, family estate like like the most here in Kamtal, uh, back to the 1750. Uh, it was a mixed farm. Uh, my my grand 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 grand, however, parents made everything from from cow, from from chicken, from pork fields, and they also grown uh, wine for more than less private consumption. Around 1900, my grand grandfather starts to uh, deliver wine to some local uh, restaurants in Oak Barrels. And after 1945, uh, my grandfather started to bottle wine and distributed the wine in, in whole Austria. And, and so on and so on. And now we are, we are here in the, in the 12th generation. What is to say? To say is uh, I have uh, really a nice, nice wine from a small place. It was called Dechand. It's also a single vineyard wine. Dechand is uh, situated... Uh, from Dechand you have a nice view to the Heiligenstein or from the Heiligenstein a nice view to the Dechand. So it's uh, very close together but completely different. In Dechand, uh, total is there are around 12 hectares under wine. It's faced to south east, east to southeast. It's a slope from uh, 200, I think around 280 meters up to, so sorry, to 245 to 344 meters. And the, the less soil there is really a huge amount on, on less. So the vines there from our vineyard, they are almost, almost 50 years old. So we speak from really old, old vines. And I think the Ried Dechand is very, very good for Grüne Wettliner as main varietal. You will also find some, some Burgundy varietals like, like Chardonnay. But also uh, on the on the begin of the slope, uh, you find some really nice Pinot Noir vineyards. Uh, so it's uh, also a good place for that. 
a complex wine matured in 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 big oak barrels. Big, when I say big oak barrels, I mean 1,500 to 2,000 liters. But also uh, a small part is matured in in stainless steel. Uh, what we do is uh, we make a skin maceration. That's very important for me to give the 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 must the chance to extract from 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 the flesh and from the skin all all the the flavors to to bring really a complex uh, full-bodied wine fermentation with uh, natural yeast so is a spontane fermentation that always ends in in some malolactic uh, so we are not not really shy to make with the premium grunewaldina also a malolactic um uh, for me it's really important that it's a it's a long fermentation time that goes up until two three months so so the earliest that it it was finishing in the in the fermentation was uh always in in january uh yeah and uh, the late last picture it's uh, it's also uh, a big success for me this year once more we got the trophy for the White Wine Maker of the Year in London by the IWC. So I think my team and we, we make it not so bad. So I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed the wine. And yeah, all the questions are welcome. And cheers. Prost. So, oh, it was uh, pretty, pretty fast, Rudy. Okay, I, I haven't looked at them. I, I, my watch. <laughs> okay, your importer important is Vininova. Is Vininova, yeah. Vininova yeah. from Poznan, yeah, yeah. city. Yeah. Okay, so you you've been twice uh, the, the 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 winemaker of White Spine. Yeah. Yeah, the, it was was uh, last week last week uh, really surprising me that I, I got the call and and the announcement. Perfect. Good. Yeah. And the name means uh, raven, yes, in English. The the rabbit means means a raven, yes, yes. Yeah. That's that's, okay. that's correct. And the and the um, all the the Riedenweine, all the single names of the vineyards have uh, a connex to to something like Steinhaus. That means there are a lot of stones there, or also Dechant. Dechant uh, that uh, comes from the Catholic, uh, from the priest that they shone. And, and uh, we think this, this hill was uh, owned by the Dechant, so he, he had the um, possibility to, to harvest uh, his wines or, or something in this, in this way. Okay, okay. Uh, first comments coming. Yeah, well balanced, even with oak. Yeah. Okay, so it's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Rudy. Uh, thank you. Enjoy, uh, enjoy the evening. Yeah. Thank you. I hope, thank and you. I hope for next us. time, well, next time, face us. to face. Yeah. Perhaps. Yes. <laughs> or, or you know, <laughs> you never know. You never know. But yeah, uh, in Poland or in Austria. But, uh, for me, I prefer always in, in Austria, so in the, in, the, in, the, in the wine region. That, that That's why more, we stay, you more know. More atmosphere and more folia. <laughs> okay, thank you. And now, okay, ladies you. and gentlemen, uh, first uh, uh, first lady here, uh, Barbara Koller from Schloss Gobelsburg. And the fourth wine, Barbara, if you are with us. Well... We met with Barbara about two weeks ago in Krakow. Yeah. Barbara and uh, excellent wine still for uh, to, to, to Rudy. Hi. Hello, Barbara. <laughs> Hello. Good Hi. evening. Hi. Hello. Yeah. So we met with Barbara two weeks ago in Krakow and she didn't recognize me. Yeah. Because you were yeah. in my master class with 40 other people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, and actually it, it was not good, for, uh, you know, it's never good not to be recognized. But Barbara uh, told me, well, 
Well, you know, on the internet, you look like Papa Strumpf, and here you are a very handsome young man. <laughs> and I found her charming, you know, and, uh, well, Barbara. Yeah, now, welcome to Schloss Goldsburg from my side as well. Welcome to Pol uh, Hello to Poland. I have prepared a, a slideshow. I hope it works. Uh, I'm showing you the slides which I have prepared. Um, Can you see my screen? Hello, can you see my screen? No, it's not working. Not big, make no, it bigger. Again. Maybe, Piotr, like, okay. let's do it from your side. All and right. This was happening last time as well. Okay. Okay. Um, Schloss Goldsburg is a monastic estate, um, which means we do belong to Cistercian Monastery. The monks actually have been running the estate since 1171 uh, until 25 years ago by themselves. Here you see uh, the map again uh, showing where Goebbelsburg is located. We are actually a small village next to the center of Grüner Veltliner in Austria, which is the city of Langenlois. So Goebbelsburg is right in the heart of the Danube region. And uh, winemaking in the Danube region dates actually back uh, to the Ro Roman Empire, as Michael was already telling you. But our estate was first mentioned in me medieval ages in 1171, uh, which means we do celebrate our 850 years of anniversary this year. Um, it was founded by Cistercian monks uh, in 1171. That was the first documentation actually of our estate. And uh, it has been run by the Cistercian monks until 25 years ago, um, until, in, until the 1990s. Here you see a beautiful picture of the estate. It's still, or it is, a Baroque-style castle, which was actually in medieval ages a fortress and then uh, refurbished uh, after being torn down. Then it was a, a Renaissance manor house and then it was refurbished in Baroque style in the 18th century. Uh, we also, with the next picture, you see a nice uh, picture of the inner court and of uh, the entryway. And uh, the Cistercian monks, as I mentioned before, were running the estate until 25 years ago. So what happened actually in the 1990s was it wasn't very hip to become a monk uh, anymore for several reasons. So they were kind of looking for somebody else to run the estate from outside. And Michael Mosbrook, who, who came to our region in the 1990s, he was actually studying winemaking from the very beginning with uh, winemakers with us in the region. And he got introduced to the monastery at the time when they were actually looking for somebody to run the estate. And he took over in 1996. He's now running it with his wife, Eva, and the next generation, actually, his three kids. He took over the responsibility in a way that he still run it in a very respectful way. Meaning we have this 850 years of tradition and history on our back and he runs it in a very traditional way. Which means we make wines of nowadays, of course, but in a very respectful and traditional method. Um, he is also the chairman of our OTW uh, Association, Österreichische Traditionsweingüter. And we have actually started in the 1990s with an appellation system based on the Burgundy system. Michael was already mentioning at the beginning, we do have at the base of the appellation, our regional wines, which is the Kamptal Grüner or Kamptal Riesling, in which we want to show the climatic influences, the climatic uh, identity of our Kamptal region. On top, there are the village appellation wines, Appellation Village, if you want to compare it with Burgundy um, uh, system. It's our Langenlois, Grüner Veltliner are serving for the Rieslings. And on top are the Grüß, the single vineyard wines, which are called Riedenwein in Austria. Ried, the term is meaning the legally registered Grü within the Austrian wine catastrophe. So when you see uh, Ried on an Austrian label, you can always be sure that a registered Gru within the Austrian Kataster. So it's not a brand of Fekin, but a legally registered Gru. And on top of these, uh, or the, the Grus, they're again divided in three levels, in non-classified Grus or single vineyards, in Erste Lage, Premier Grus or Große Lage, Grand Cru level. 
Große Lage, Michael already mentioned it as well, does not exist yet. We are still in the process of finding out which ones out of the now existing erste Lage will be eventually designated or upvalued into große Lage level. This will be happen or this will happen within the next five to ten years, I would say. So our appellation is still ending with erste Lage level. And we, you're now tasting or just let me also show you erste Lage, one OTW, the symbol you will find on the capsule or also on the label. And you're now tasting uh, Ried Lamm. This is the wrong picture, actually. Um, can you, uh, Piotr, can you show the next picture of Ried Lamm? I, you should have the picture of Ried Lamm, actually, which you're tasting. Anyway, uh, Ried Lamm is the wine you're tasting today. Um, it's uh, actually located at the slopes of Ried mm -hmm. Heiligenstein, which is um, which is southeast or southeast orientated on the southeast side of Heiligenstein. It's uh, based on Lust and Lomisol. The term of Lamm actually derives from an Austrian tra transformation of the term Lomisol. So you find lots of Lust and Lomisol in that so in that site. And it's also influenced by the crew of Heiligenstein, which is actually located above, um, which means lots of sandstone conglomerate of Heiligenstein is being washed out the slopes in uh, down the slopes of Heiligenstein into the crew of Ried Lamm, giving Ried Lamm more minerality. So you have this texture of this creaminess developed uh, Grüner Veltliner, which is based on or growing on loamy soil, but with these additional touches of minerality, with gives the wine more texture, more structure. And we're talking about the about the wine with aging uh, possibilities or aging potential of, let's say, 30 or 40 years. We do know that we can talk about this aging, aging poten potential because in our a library we do have wines dating back to the 1940s so uh, michael is also always telling us not to put back red wines in your cellar but if you get great wines from the danube region get white wines from the danube region they can age really long and they will be enjoyable still in <laughs> some centuries um Ried Lam is actually uh, trained in Lyra system, which is a uh, double side system, which gives the wine even more, uh, or the, it's an open system, oh, more open to the sun. So you get more reflection, reflections from the sun. The, the berries have more extraction and therefore the wine is also uh, wider in body and mellower. It's uh, spontaneous fermented and it matures in big oak barrels of Austrian oak uh, in for about two years. We have Lam uh, matured this vintage uh, 2019 was matured one and a half year in, in these big oak barrels. But we even tend to mature our Erste Lagen, which probably gets to Große Lage level uh, for two years in the future. So 2019 was still 18 months in uh, Austrian oak casks. We only use Austrian oak for our wines because we're convinced that uh, our wines uh, growing in our soil, on our terroir, they mature best in Austrian regional oak. We want to show identity of Kamtal in also in our wines. And we use Austrian oak casks also for sustainable reasons. Uh, we do not want to import from anywhere in the world, so we use our regional oak, which actually grows in the forest quarter north uh, to Kamtal. Um, our, all our oak cask, uh, Piotr, there is also a picture of the of the cellar, uh, if you can show us the cellar picture. All our oak casks are actually um, double fooder size, so 2,700 liters or fifth bucket size. Here you can see the cellar. Um, and what is also unique with us in the cellar, you can see it's a historic cellar. The eldest part dates back to medieval ages. Um, we do have all our casks uh, on wheels. We also call the barrels on wheels uh, because we do not have any electronic temperature on our casks. The point was when Michael took over this cultural heritage of wine in the 1990s, so 1996, he actually did not want to change everything into modernized steel tank and electronic temperature uh, control, which was kind of modern those days. And he wanted to find a solution of, um, or he actually had to find a solution 
in not temperature control the wines electronically. So therefore he invented this uh, system, which we call the dynamic seller system, meaning all our barrels are on wheels and we move them wherever we need them. So we actually do not bring the temperature to the, to the wines electronically, but bring the wines to the temperature, meaning for fermentation to warmer parts in the cellar, for stabilization, we even bring them outside in December, January, when it's freezing outside. So they go through wine stabilization even outside. And uh, this is our simple and strict uh, temperature control, which is also sustainable. So we do care for sustainable uh, sustainability also in our cellar. Um, we are certified sustainable because we are also convinced that this is the best system for, for our vineyards and for bringing these uh, the vineyards, the sites into the next generation. Michael, he is running the estate, as I mentioned before, in a long-term lease, which means he will bring back or he will be uh, he will be giving this uh, this uh, estate to the next generation sustainability also means for us that we of course we do not use herbicides and pesticides in our vineyards but we use or we it, it we are concerned for the whole system meaning we also have a social duty that all our employees all our harvest workers they are not only employed throughout the harvest season but throughout the whole year and using regional oak casks and of course taking care of energy in the cellar uh, here's uh, our certificate for sustainability and the picture you showed us before is actually the picture of our new cask cellar and that's also uh, what i want to mention since we do celebrate 850 years of uh, anniversary of schloss Gobelsburg here i want to show you the new part of our cellar Michael, he uh, built an, or he extended the cellar also in a very traditional way, meaning everything was built in stones and bricks and uh, a granite, uh, meaning the cellar should last another 500 or hopefully another 850 years. So this was actually inaugurated this year uh, by the abbot of the monastery. And I hope I can see you in person soon with us at Schlobel, uh, Goblesburg in the near future to show you our beautiful new cask cellar. And yeah, I would like to say goodbye from this point now and I pass on to my colleague. Thank and you very much, Barbara. Yeah. Uh, granite, <laughs> granite is really solid. Yeah. <laughs> really the, the Austrian oak uh, fits the best, uh, uh, the, the, the Austrian Danube. the Austrian oak for the barrels. Yeah, and enjoy the tasting and I say goodbye from Schloss ah, Gobelsburg okay. in the meanwhile. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Barbara. Bye. And some comments on the, we are impressed. Oh, they are impressed. <laughs> Good to hear that. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Well, thank you very much. Your importers in Poland are Vininova and Vinoteca 13. Yes, we do have both. We have right. Right. Okay. Two great and supporters. Hope to, <laughs> hope to meet you again. Yes, hope to see you soon. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye. And now, bye bye. Thank you. And now, Edwin. Edwin Schreibeis uh, and another Rit Geisberg. Edwin? Yes. Hello, Hello everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, I mean, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, this is your six minutes. Okay. Okay. So, hello everybody. My name is Edwin Schreibers from the winery Schreibers. We are quite a young winery. I'm the third generation. So my grandfather started with a mixed agriculture with pigs. And when my father took over the winery, he focused on, on the vineyards. Um, when he took over the winery, he got four hectares of vineyards. And next year will be a very important year for me. So there is time for me to take over the winery. And I'm very happy that I can take over about 20 hectares of, of wine. Um, maybe a, a little joke first. Um, I have 40,000 friends. Nobody is on Facebook. Some of them are named Grünewald Lina, Riesling and Weißburgunder. Um, we are a family winery, 
they are just my parents and me working and my grandfather is helping a little bit but now he he became 86 years old and i think now it's time for him to stop working in the vineyards um, we uh, mainly grow uh, Grüner Vedina and second place is in our winery is quite special. Uh, it's uh, Pinot Blanc or Weißburgunder. Um, yeah, that's me harvesting Grüner Vedina 2019, the wine we gonna taste now. First, something about the Geisberg. Um, the Geisberg is like a uh, for me, the most important single vineyard because our cellar is also situated on the on the bottom on the Geisberg. We also built in 2016 a new cellar house with three layers that we can work with the gravity. Um, and the Geisberg is uh, shared by three villages. So Strass has a part of it, Kamen and Töring. I think it's quite unique. Um, the Grüne Wiener from the Geisberg that we're going to taste now is more from the bottom of the Geisberg. Uh, there is more or less cover, so it's a better soil for the Grüne Wiener. On the top, you mainly find Riesling. It's a little bit poor, the soils, and this is very good for very uh, expressional uh, Riesling. And now to the Grunewaldina. I think I have the most powerful wine in this in this tasting today. Um, 2019 was uh, a very good year, um, very good summer. Uh, we got the perfect uh, rain in this year to the right time. So we got very, very ripe grapes, which means also a little bit more alcohol. Here we have a little bit more than 14%. It's quite powerful. Acidity is quite normal for the Geisberg. It's always a little bit lower. Um, the wines that we produce, especially the single vineyard wines, are mostly quite dry. So normally less uh, than three grams sugar. Yeah, and if you smell, you get the very ripe uh, flavors. Of, of apples and pears. We are, we are not using wood for our Geisberg. It's just fermented in stainless steel and kept on the, on the fine lee for another year. And just before the harvest of the next uh, Geisberg, we just bottle the previous Geisberg. Also on the palate, it's a very powerful expression of wine. And I think you also recognize the minerality of the soil on the palate. It's not, not the acidity, it's minerality. So that's from me. I hope you enjoyed. Cheers. Well, thank you very much. And tell me the price. Because I, I um, Excel price is twelve euro. Twelve euro, Excel. Okay. Right, and according to the to the uh, to the sheet, it's uh, it's uh, two thousand thirty the life expectancy, right? Two thousand thirty. Say it again. I say according to the to the technical sheet. Uh, yeah, you can drink it until 2030. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Still some time. Still some time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Any comments on it? How do you like it? Hmm? They were shy today. Yeah, maybe. Uh, somebody's will love it. Great one, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, the, both comments coming from Warsaw, you know, so from the capital city here. Oh, okay. Okay.
Okay, yeah. A little petrol. Maybe. Hmm? What? Yeah, everybody is welcome. If you're coming to the Kamtal Valley, you're welcome at the cellar door. Thank you much. One day we come. Hopefully. <laughs> we come all. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Edwin. And uh, and now uh, the last... Uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the Matthias Hager. Matthias Hager, ladies and gentlemen. Matthias Hager. And Gruner Feldliner. Matthias, are you with us? Hello. Can we see him? Matthias? No, Matthias. Ah, he's coming. She's coming, she's coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. No? Yes? Well, let's, let's see the first photo of uh, uh, Matthias Hager. Perhaps he will join us in a moment. Ah, family. So if I guess well, Matthias is the the one at the left, yeah, on the left. Matthias, hello. That would be a pity because this wine has a higher content of residual sugar, and, and we should drink it, taste it now. At the end of the of the Gruners. Huh? There comes Matthias. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Hello Matthias. You have problems, please write something on the chat if you can, of course. If not, please log out and come back. Yeah, sure. We still can. Yeah. So, uh, Edwin, there are some comments. Yeah. On the last wine. On the chat. <clears throat> well, it's a good question. So, as far as I'm quite a young winemaker, so now I got 34 years old. Um, I'm expecting that the wine is going to be quite good in the next 10 years, but I'm not sure about the spicy finish. Maybe it's uh, getting a little bit more balanced and it's losing a little bit of the spicy finish as well. Mm. Okay. And the previous vintages of this wine, the oldest one is how old? See it again? Since when do you produce this uh, 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 ah. this wine? How long? Mm. The oldest one is from which vintage? Ah, uh, hello. Hello. I think maybe 2003. I think there my father started uh, producing this wine. Uh huh. And it's still drinkable. Yeah, it's still, still drinkable. drinkable. Yeah. Okay. Good. <clears throat> right. Perfect. Thank you very much, Edwin. Thank you, thank you. and uh, hello, Matthias. Uh, hello. Hello. Thank hello. you for the for waiting. Uh, I make the I'm test on an other computer. That's the reason why something not happened. Uh, perfect. Yes, uh, I'm located in uh, Molans. It's uh, one of the uh, highest uh, areas in Kamtar. Uh, we are. Uh, dominated of the cold winds from uh, wood water. Yes, you can see here the vineyard. Uh, it's uh, one of the highest in the Kamtar area. And here the cold wind from wood water and Czech Republic and also from Poland comes uh, to us. 
Yes. Yes, we are also a family winery. You see the photo before. Uh, I think in the fifth, fifth, sixth or seventh generation. Uh, we don't know it exactly. Uh, and also uh, before we have many cows and, and pigs and now we are more focused uh, on, on wine because uh, 2006 we changed to organic and also later to biodynamic Demeter. And now we, we, uh, we are interested to uh, go more into diversity. We also have a small restaurant and my brother uh, makes the restaurant and near the restaurant uh, it's called Wine by Sarai. Uh, they uh, are pigs and the idea is uh, to have it similar to like 100 years ago uh, with the whole production of uh, wheat and meat and also vegetables because now we are in the beginning of this process. Yes, uh, my brother, I say, it makes uh, the restaurant, the uh, uh, farmer's taverna. And yes, in summer, it's really nice uh, to sit on the terrace and taste the wines. Yes, we worked uh, by dynamic Demeter. It's really a nice way for us. Uh, we get more uh, focused on, on terroir and then the sites and the reading. And we, we uh, more, are, we have many, you see it in the last picture of Michael Mosbrucker, we have also uh, some uh, hardcore natural wines without sulfur or with very low quantity of sulfur. Also Riesling uh, skin fermented six weeks and it's really a special thing in the in the winery now let's taste the taste the wine I, we have the matured wine in the uh, group it's it's seeberg it's uh, close to langelois and uh, the soil is really uh, high minerality uh, you have many uh, mica slate and also paragnes and it's uh, on a sea level uh, attitude at uh, 340. It was uh, in a, it was all in the winery is spontane fermented, like uh, after 15 years, we did, we, uh, 15 years we use no selected yeast and also uh, not many other additive, uh, additives it's the uh, Demeter law in, for Austria. Yes, and when you have the wine inside, it's uh, vintage 16, it was really special uh, autumn. It was uh, in the middle was really hot. And then as the summer was really rainy, we have also some milk in this year. And in the end, uh, it came uh, again, uh, the rain. And it's really a cool climate, uh, vintage. And I, I think it's one of the best uh, vintages for Gruner in my, in, my, uh, in my winery. Yes, I see something on the chat. Uh, one question about the sugar. I think it's written here. It's also 15 gram. It's semi uh, dry. I think with the aging, you cannot feel the sugar. In the end, you have so many uh, tobacco leaves and and uh, spiciness, and you need the sugar for for the roundness. And uh, it's only the sugar; it feels sweet when it's too young. And I think now it's a really good uh, time for taste this wine, where you cannot feel so many sugar inside. And it's, I think, one of uh, a really good uh, uh, dishes. Also, two dishes, spicy dishes is a good combination. Also, Asia food with uh, chili or some uh, ginger. 
Yes, I think I have enough time speaking. Uh, enjoy the wine and preferred in a Buganda class. The tannins are more smoother. Mm. And greetings to Poland. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias, very much. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, do you have any experience with older previous vintages of this wine? Yes, we have. Uh, also, in the restaurant, you can taste, I think, uh, 10 or more vintages of, of this uh, side. Because it's re really special for my brother. It is uh, her passion, for his passion to. Uh, to uh, serve uh, many old uh, vintages from the winery. All right. Okay. Good. Thank you. And you're, you're in Portland, in Poland. It's uh, a wine mates uh, uh, company from Warsaw. Yes. We, right? we start uh, this year and I think ah. they are young guys and uh, I'm really happy with him. Yeah. We also have many natural wines, I think. Also, classic wines, or they also uh, get a bigger portfolio with uh, more natural wines, and I think it's really good with him. Yeah, there are two Lucas there. Ah, okay. Wine. Two Lucas. It's difficult to, you know, to separate them, to, to describe yes. which one. It's like Bester Twins Brothers, Twin Brothers, yeah, the other company okay uh, uh uh thank you very much matthias uh, uh uh so i i i agree i agree the 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 sweetness of this wine will be involved in the in the structure in a few years yes. from now when you have it when you have it uh, when you drink it too early then you have more the sweetness on the pellets or uh, it's also uh, like the mosel wines uh when they are 10 years old, you cannot feel the sugar so high. And yeah. I think for the roundness and for the smooth uh, aftertaste, it's really special, the, the, the sugar. Mm, I agree. I agree with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and stay with us. Uh, and any comments, ladies and gentlemen, do you agree with us? You disagree? Uh, you like it? You like it not? So let us know. Right, and now uh, we are changing uh, the, the, the variety and the first Riesling is coming. First Riesling and Davis, Davis Vesely. Thank you. Thank you, Matthias. Bye bye. Bye. Davis Vesely, yes, Davis, you were right. See, I was wrong. It's, uh, uh, it's later than I thought, yes. So, Davis, join us, please. Veseli is a is a name of Hungarian origin. Yes, it is. Ah, ah yes, you are here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> ah, fine. So, this is uh, uh, your six minutes. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Uh, uh, that's fine. Okay. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. All right, okay. So hello and good evening from uh, Langenlois. Uh, it's, it's the biggest town in, in the Kampfthal region. So uh, my winery dates uh, back to 1679 and it was run in the ninth generation when I had the, the opportunity to take over here, yeah, which was around 10 years ago. Um, and I was from a complete different industry. So uh, wine was not new to me. Um, yeah, but winemaking, uh, that, that was, of course, challenging at, at that time. Yes, um, since I took over uh, the winery, uh, which we, we changed uh, some things, not only the name, uh, which we switched in uh, 2013 to Weingut Vesely. But I would say uh, the, the, the main focus, my main focus, was to switch all the vineyards uh, to organic farming, to natural farming. And um, yeah, at the end, finally, 
we switched uh, all the, the vineyards and the cellar uh, to biodynamic farming uh, in 2019. Um, and we are working uh, close to Dimitar standards meanwhile. Yes, um, I have uh, in general <clears throat> two categories of wines. It's uh, on the one hand, it's the, the terraces wines. Uh, those wines I'm aging up to one year uh, on the lease and and uh, bring it uh, in the next year of, of the harvest. So I have uh, two Grüner Vetlina and one Riesling uh, of the Terraces wines. Uh, on the other hand, I have my Terra wines. Uh, those are uh, the, the Cruz Heiligenstein, uh, Seeberg, Steinmastel, Käferberg, uh, Schenkenbichel. Um, and yes, those wines I'm I'm aging meanwhile five years in the cellar, which means three years on the lease and in the barrel in in, in, in oak barrels and acacia barrels, and two years on the on the bottle before we uh, release release the wines to the market. Yeah, today I brought the, uh, a terrace wine. Yeah, it's the it's the Riesling Loiserberg. Vintage 2020. It's also a wine we are uh, selling in Poland um, for quite some time. And the Loiserberg, you see a nice picture here. Um, it's it's from one of our breeding boxes for the Hupui. Uh, it's it's right up uh, of of our of our vineyards on Loiserberg. Um, just maybe a few words also to, uh, to the Hupui. Um, we, we kind of established a, a breeding project for this very rare bird um, in the in the Kamta region as it was more or less distinguished. And uh, in 2012, we uh, installed the first breeding boxes. And yeah, meanwhile, we have around 20 breeding boxes and uh, the bird is more and more coming back so uh, yeah, once we once you're here in Langenlois and you walk through the vineyards, uh, especially in in the season, so May, June, July, there is a good chance to uh, to watch this uh, very special birds. Yeah, as for the Loiserberg, it's the highest vineyard in Langenlois. It's at an elevation of uh, around 380 meters. It's also the coolest site we have in uh, in 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 Langenlois. Um, so we have uh, we have the north uh, streams or winds coming from uh, from the from the very cold uh, Waldviertel, which are cooling down the nights very much. Um, and it's a very special and very typical site for for the Riesling grape. Uh, the soil is um, is very demanding. The terra is very demanding on Loisberg. It's uh, it's nice soil and uh, it's merging with uh, mica schist soil. And uh, you you have the rocks uh, up to the surface, and um, and and only um, only a very thin um, layer of humus. So it's 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 very very demanding, especially in in dry years. Um, but 2020 was, was rather cool vintage, uh, with a lot of rain, uh, at harvest. So, uh, that was also very demanding and challenging. And yes, uh, we are, uh, we are picking all the grapes, of course, by hand, um, uh, for all vineyards. Um, yes. And for, for Loiserberg, we, we put, we put the grapes on, on skin. Um, yeah, we are we are we are mashing the skins or the the grapes uh, with our feet, and and keeping the uh, the grapes uh, for an, a day on skin before we press it. So we don't use any um, any additives, so no enzymes, no betanite for clarification of the must, and um, the whole cellar, of course, is fermenting spontaneously with the wild yeast of the vineyards. Um, this wine especially has been uh, aged for 10 months on the lease um, without uh, uh, using any sulfur 
um, uh, in the 10 months, only uh, putting a, a, a small dosage of sulfur um, before bottling. Yeah, it's a, I would say it's a very, it's a very typical uh, a Riesling from the side Loiserberg. Uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's very, it's, it's, it's very crispy. It's compact. Um, it has a very firm uh, structure, high acidity, uh, with good extracts and uh, very much uh, straightforward. I would say, yeah. Cheers. So, if you have any questions, I'm happy. Well, to there are some comments. There are some comments about the hoopoo uh, and about your wine, and about your wine, and uh, uh, well, and uh, tell me, uh, uh, Davis, you're importer in Poland. Uh, it's Sakne Vino. Yes. That's uh, the, uh, I'm sorry. I, I love it. Uh, I love you pronounce it. It's Zatsne Vino okay. in Polish. <laughs> Zatsne Vino, but the, you know, the, the name is really difficult. Zatsne, Zatsne Vino uh, from uh, Warsaw. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Some Hungarian words are also difficult, you know, uh, to us. <laughs> <It is. laughs> I don't know if you speak Hungarian. We are living in a, in a global world. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I uh, I must say I, I, I really like it, and it's a second uh, uh, wine here today, the second out of three. Uh, 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 yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, it's um, first reasoning, and uh, you know it's uh, something like an earthquake. Yes, I'm just reading what, what's the Horeca price in Poland. Um, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you would have to, um, you would have to, to contact uh, Satsnevino. Um, I can all, only... <laughs> Great, I yes. Can only tell you, <laughs> I can only tell you that the retail price in Austria is at, is at around 15 euros. Yeah. 50? Or 15? 15. 1.5. 15, 15, 15, okay. But that, that's in Austria. Yeah, so I'm... That's very decent price. I have no I idea what's what's the Horeca price in, in Poland. You should contact Zatznevino. Zatznevino. I believe uh, Zatznevino. 15 in Austria. Okay. Thank you, Davis. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And, uh, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, I believe they like it. Thank you. Yeah, I wish you. I wish. Uh, I wish you a happy tasting. And thank you. Very nice. Thank you. With all the uh, the great wines. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, and now and now Andreas uh, Andreas Eder and Heiligenstein Riesling. Andreas, will you make it, Andreas? Andreas, hello. And the next one is Yolanta, but after Andreas, following Andreas, yeah. Uh, yeah, Andreas, hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Uh, Andreas Good evening. And daughter. <laughs> daughter, right. Okay. Perfect. So this is your time, and uh, you have six minutes. Go on. Okay. Okay. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the winery Eder and Wolf in Langenlois. I'm glad to present our winery with my dad today. And first of all, I'm Teresa, and that's my dad next to me. Hello, my name is Andreas Eder. I'm 56 years old. I'm graduated from the Weinbauschule Kloster Neuburg near Vienna and started working in the family business when I was 20 years old. I'm married and have three beautiful daughters. One of them you see on the picture. The oldest is Julia, 25 years. Lisa Maria, 24 years, and the youngest, Teresa, 19 years old. Thank you. So, hello, my name is Teresa. I'm the youngest daughter of the, of the family and 
and currently studying state certified van manager in, in Krems. My goal is to one day to continue my father's winery and I'm ready to quite involved in our family business. Now, facts about our winery. We're a small family winery and own eight hectares in Langenlois. The winery Eda is farmed ecologically. Since 2013, the winery Wolf has been cultivated organically. And since 2016, it is also officially organically certified. The respectful approach of our resources and nature is of utmost importance to us. We want to preserve the traditions of our family business while remaining open for new ideas. Furthermore, we aim to promote regionalism and preserve rare varieties of wine. In the winery wolf, we pla plant this year PV varieties named Blüt Muscatella and Pinot Nova, which are fungal resistant crossings. Uh, PV is a kind of hybrid that, that has been through several stages of crossing and may include quite a lot of Vitis vinivera and just a little American Vitis. With these grapes, you need to spray less in the vineyards and is good for the environment. Our vineyards, Steinhaus, Steinmassel, Leuserberg, Zöbinger Heiligenstein, Eichelberg, Kogelberg and Hasel are located all around Langenhaus and Zöbing. We have many different Grunewaldina and Rieslings and we also produce Chardonnay, Gerber Muscatella, Blauburger, Zweigelt and St. Laurent. The work in our vineyards provides the foundation for the quality of our wines. Considerate intelligent processing as well as the use of modern technology and play an important part in finalizing the wines. The wines are fermented cold and stored in steel tank like the Riesling. This preserves a natural aroma of the different varieties as well as the useful freshness. The red wines are major in large oak barrels. And the Kamtal is a popular destination for Austrian and as well as international tourists and visitors. Kamtal is a valley located 200 to 300 meters above sea level and the weather is characterized by hot days and colder nights in the summer and long sunny autumns. These are perfect conditions for the cultivation of wine. You can find here less low primary rock nice and slate soils in this wine growing area. The varieties Grüne Veltliner and Riesling are very typical for this region. These wines, this, these wines, of, these wines of these varieties are marked by the denomination of origin and it's known as DAC Districtus Austriae Controllatus. One of the most important wines of all in our winery is the Riesling, which grows on the Grü Heiligenstein. The Heiligenstein is very popular because the space is very limited with only a few vineyards. Heiligenstein is also famous because of its volanic and primary rock soil, which gives the grapes a soul distinctive mineralic and creates wines typical for the soil. Our vineyard on the Heiligenstein is 60 years old and was planted by my grandfather. The old age of the wines results in fundamental rhizomes, which are well prepared for the climatic conditions. This leads to a special quality every year. Now we want to taste this Riesling from the Heiligenstein with you. So now everybody of you has our Riesling Heiligenstein in the glass. 
from the vintage 2020. This Riesling is a high quality wine. The Riesling is dry and has an alcohol content of 13.1% by volume. The wine presents a clear golden yellow with shimmers of green in the nose. In the nose, you can recognize a remarkable fragrance of apricot and citrus fruits. And on the palate, it has a pleasant mineralic. It's fruity like peaches and apricot and has an elegant play of acidity. The Riesling is well balanced and storable. Cheers. Thank you and cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Teresa, Teresa, you're 16 or 19 years old? 19. Ah, 19. Good. <laughs> yeah. It, it's okay. She, she's okay. allowed to drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> she's allowed. Yeah. Right. And the price, uh, the retail price in Austria is about 9 euro. Yeah. 9 euro Excella, yes. Yeah. Excella. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Riegenstein. Uh, uh, any uh, is the first of the two Hi, Riegenstein uh, uh, here uh, this on this tasting. Uh, and uh, anything? Uh, any any comments? Hi, Riegenstein. The name. No. The name uh, is is not from Holy Stone. Uh, mm. It's it's from Hellstone. Mm. Uh, because in, in the autumn, when, when the sun gets down, uh, the, the Heiligenstein is like fire and very red. So it's mm -hmm. from Hellstone, yeah. not from Holy Stone. Not from Holy Stone. So <laughs> Heilige Nacht is still Heilige Nacht. Yeah? Yes. It's not, yeah. <laughs> Nicht okay. Heiligenstein. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks also. Thank you. Have a nice uh, evening. Yeah. And enjoy the taste. And stay with us. Uh, yes. uh, appreciate your 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 uh, uh, the, the wine. Well, and now and now, ladies and gentlemen, now big surprise, Yolanta from Dole, wine good to Dole, and Yolanta, Yolanta is originally from. Where is she from? Well. Actually, Yolanta is originally from Zakopane. So this is in Poland. But where is Yolanta? Hmm. Hello, Yolanta. Join us, please. Click. Press the buttons, yeah, please. Jola from Szczecin says hello also. Okay. Hello, Jola from Szczecin. And where is Jolanta from Zakopane? I wanted to start with traditional Polish Grzgot, but there's no Jolanta. Hmm? Uh, please, if you have any problem. Ah, hello. No, hear you. No, hear you. <laughs> and the micro. Ah. Teraz? No. Tera. Tera. Oh. No, bravo. Słychać, tak? No. Słychać, słychać, słychać. No to gryzgot w takim razie. Nie, dzień dobry. <laughs> dzień dobry. Dzień, dzień dobry. dobry. Dzień dobry. No to w takim razie w pani ręce, pani Jolanto, sześć minut. Sześć ja, minut. A ja się... Dobrze. Also. Ja myślę, że osłuchaliście się o winnicach, o Weingut, o piwnicach, o wszystkim. Ja nazywam się Jola Dole, od 30 lat jestem w Austrii. Wraz z mężem, z Peterem Dole, prowadzimy naszą firmę, która znajduje się w Stras im Strassetal. To jest rejon Kamptal. Nasza firma jest 
średnią firmą, nie aż tak duża, nie aż tak mała. Pracujemy na 35 hektarach, produkujemy wina białe, wina czerwone. Wina białe mamy 70%, 30% wina czerwone. A wina białe są to wina gry na wetlina, która jest, które są bardzo dobrze, które bardzo dobrze się sprzedają w Austrii. Wina czerwone jest to Blauzwegelt, jest to też taka sorta, austriacka sorta. Jeżeli chodzi o sprzedaż, staramy się, staramy się, sprzedajemy, eksportujemy 65% za granicę, resztę sprzedajemy w Austrii. Tutaj się pokazują zdjęcia z naszej piwnicy i tak dalej, ale ja już nie chcę się tak wiele rozgadywać na ten temat, bo wszyscy opowiadali tyle o swoich firmach, o swoich piwnicach, o swoich winnicach. Także ja chciałabym to jakoś tak króciutko. My, ok, tu widzimy teraz nasz, naszą firmę, nasz wjazd do firmy, bramy wjazdową i tak dalej, ale ja może króciutko dalej. O naszym winie. My prezentujemy dzisiaj nasze wino, czyli jest to Riesling Brungasse. Jest to, bardzo, jest to wino, które bardzo dobrze sprzedaje się w Austrii. Jeżeli chodzi o to wino, smak. Smak tego wina gdzieś tam możemy określić, troszeczkę smakuje na morele, na brzoskwinie. Leciutki zapach róży. Wino to, tak jak mówię, bardzo dobrze sprzedaje się w gastronomii, gdzie, gdzie w Austrii, w Niemczech, w Belgii. Co możemy więcej powiedzieć? Tu już jest wszystko powiedziane. Tu już było tyle pokazane zdjęć z winnic, jak te wina są produkowane, jak te wina są obrabiane. Także u nas nie jest inaczej. Jest to rejon, gdzie staramy się te wina jak najlepiej produkować, sprzedawać. Jeżeli, jeżeli są jakieś inne informacje, więcej informacji, bardzo proszę odwiedzić naszą stronę na internecie, zobaczycie więcej o nas, o naszej firmie. Tak jak wspomnieliśmy, ja jestem z Zakopanego, także my jesteśmy taką tradycyjną firmą, która chce sprzedać wino, skosztować wino. Także ja jestem jak najbardziej za, za tym, że jak będziemy następnym razem w Zakopanym, możemy się spotkać, możemy wino nasze prezentować, kosztować, czy w Krakowie. My jesteśmy na wszystkie propozycje otwarci, także czekamy na jakieś informacje od Was. Pani, pani Jolo, ale Pani jest bardziej z Zakopanego, czy bardziej z Murza Sichla? Ja jestem z Murza Sichla, ale należę pod Zakopane. No. Także, tak jak mówię, my tradycyjnie, my naprawdę, dla nas nie ma problemu, my jesteśmy bardzo często w Zakopanym, ja mam dom w Zakopanym, my jesteśmy często w Krakowie. Jeżeli ktoś ma jakikolwiek interes, proszę z nami się kontaktować, zorganizujemy malutkie jakieś fiakostum, yy, próbę wina. Także ja uważam, że naprawdę otworzyć butelkę wina, skosztować, nie no można pani, porównać. Już ma Pani zaproszenie do hotelu Aries. No Zakopanem. proszę bardzo, no na, na święta. Pozdrawia Pani Jo. Dziękuję bardzo, pozdrawiam również. A jakie są takie wewnętrzne relacje między Zakopanem a Murzasichlem? Bo na przykład w Krakowie między Bieżanowem a Prokocimiem, wie Pani, nie jest najlepiej. Wie Pan, co jest najgorsze? Najgorszy jest Murzasichla dojazd do Zakopanego. To jest, to jest ciężkie, wie pan, ale Fajnie. tak poza tym to jest wszystko fajnie i cieszymy się za każdym razem, jak jesteśmy w domu, jak jesteśmy w Zakopanym, możemy troszkę pomieszkać w Zakopanym, pocieszyć się tymi górami, tym Giewontem, także jeszcze, jeszcze jakbyśmy mogli coś sprzedać w Zakopanym, jakieś nasze winko, coś tam, a wie pan, to by było super. To byłoby super. No dobrze, to bardzo dziękujemy. Super. Bardzo dziękujemy. Dobrze mieć swojego człowieka w Kamptal w takim razie. Wszyscy Państwo już wiecie, że winnica dole, winiarnia dole jest, przynajmniej dogadacie się po polsku. No właśnie, ta, to, jest, to jest najważniejsze, prawda? I tak jak no mówię, jak... proszę o kontakt i, i, i my jesteśmy na wszystko otwarci, także... No, jakieś Czekamy. komentarze dotyczące wina, proszę Państwa, na czacie? Na razie są propozycje imprez. Okej, okay. no super. W takim razie dziękuję bardzo i pozdrawiam jeszcze raz wszystkich. Dziękujemy, dziękujemy. Dziękuję bardzo, do zobaczenia. Do zobaczenia, dziękujemy.
Well, and now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Alvin and uh, Weingut Jurcic. Jurcic. Alvin, hello, are you with us? No to, Pani Jolu, jeszcze Szczecin. Szczecin. Jolanta ze Szczecina z przyjaciółmi pozdrawia ze Szczecina. Jolanta ze Szczecina pozdrawia ze Szczecina. To, to się przynajmniej zgadza tutaj. I wino bardzo dobre, napisa Jolanta. So, hello, hello. Hello, hello, good evening, Alvin. So, uh, this is your six minutes, okay? Um, thank you very much and thanks for, for joining tonight. Um, we just finished a, a beautiful harvest uh, 2021 about uh, two, two weeks ago. And uh, the last vineyard we, we picked uh, for this harvest, it was actually a, a Zübinger Heiligenstein. And um, we, we really kind of got sentimental um, because it was the last grapes to pick. And I think it was the best harvest uh, since me and my wife, Stephanie, are, are back home. Um, we had um, seven weeks of beautiful conditions, of beautiful, perfect um, grapes. There were only two little stops, two days of, of rain, where we had to take a little break. But all the grapes got into our cellar in such a beautiful, aromatic um, condition. This is something I would yeah, wish for the next couple of harvests as well. Um, and I think all the winemakers here in Austria are, are super happy with the quality and um, everyone has a, has a big smile on their, their faces. And now we will wait till fermentation is over. And um, I just checked in the cellar today, tasting Heiligenstein and all the Sini Winyard wines, which are still sweet, still in fermentation in the big old Austrian barrels. And yeah, let's wait and see. But I just want to give you a little um, preview on this um, on this upcoming vintage and um, yeah um, yeah just we jump to the Zwinger Heiligenstein <clears throat> which is one of the the most not only most beautiful hill sites we'll find in our area but um, what makes it so special is actually the stuff which is under the earth is the geology um, many different soil types um, what we tasted also today you'll find the same um, kind of glimmer schist also in the in the cram style you'll find the same kind of loss in the southern other, other parts of cram style or or um, Bagram. but when it comes to heiligenstein it's only this little hillside you see where you find a geology which is um, dating back to the permian time about 250 million years ago it's a compressed um, desert sand, sandstone with um, conglomerates and with volcanic parts and this is this should actually be eroded away over the million years but it's kind of um, still still existing and this is why we are in this lucky situation to to have some several different power cells on this heiligenstein and we do um, um, not only one because terroir or Heiligenstein is not Heiligenstein. If you walk from left to the right, from west to east, you will see that um, soil is the color is changing. And this comes because when this rock, I don't know how quite a long time, um, there was a moment in the in the ages when this kind of hillside like dropped 90 degrees. And so every step you do, you walk, you walk into history, basically, and which is also good for the for the for the roots of the wines because they find it easy to go straight down in quite a hard um, rock. And um, um, when it comes to the to the our classic Heiligenstein, I can I can speak for all of our single vineyard wines. Um, we harvest ripe but uh, not overripe. We do not actually believe in this idea of the later the harvest, the better. Um, we believe in a, in a, in a perf perfect uh, ripeness of taste. This, this is something you cannot really measure, but you can taste it in the grapes. Um, 
there are many things you can analyze, but at the end, the decision needs to be done by by your taste. When um, it's not, we don't get um, we we don't let us guide by just analyzing sugar acidity and stuff like this. But it needs to be in balance, and um, we hate botrytis for our still wines, and that's. When you have 100% healthy grapes, you can work with um, a skin maceration without any sulfur. Um, those wines then go into big old barrels. Um, they stay up to one year on the full lease. Um, the only thing what we do is, is topping the barrels. Um, and we completely um, stopped trying to making things better. And we try also like in um, we really tried to get this silent voice on, on terroir into all of our different um, single vineyard Erste Lago wines. Uh, we do quite a lot because we love this idea of winifying, winifying parcel by parcel. And um, so we want to have a look behind um, the, the curtain of the cellar. And so we don't trick around with uh, using stainless steel here, using new oak there, using botrytis in this wine and no in this wine. So basically all of the wines have the same chance to develop and to show us their, their inner DNA, their character of the, the vegetation period. And this is our idea um, how close we can get to understand terroir. But I still believe that the last 10% on quality, it's, 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 um, it's this idea, it's the character of the wine, which is done by certain decisions, what we do, and also decisions when we decide not to do something and just wait. And we want to make um, silent wines with um, giving it the, the potential of maturing on the full lease themselves. We don't do any batonnage. We don't want to make things bigger. We just don't want to polish away any any edges and, and spikes of, of character and of minerality. And yeah, that's how it is, uh, how it happened in 2019, how this Riesling Heiligenstein uh, in your glasses is tasting. Uh, I didn't manage to bring a glass, sorry, but I hope you, you like it. And um, maybe just two words about our winery. It's an old family winery. I grew up on a very traditional um, winery here, and um, which is cool on the one side, but I always tried to 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 get out, to travel around in the in the big wide uh, wine world, to see, uh, to learn about all these different techniques in France, to learn about lifestyle and different kind of winemaking in uh, Australia or New Zealand. But at the end, we always asked ourselves the question of what makes um, Camptel unique? How can we make a style out of this um, beautiful region, which is hard to copy in different areas? And for us, it's all about balance, elegancy. Uh, we want to have wines with a super liveliness. And also in times of climate change, we have the, the ability to make uh, super crisp mineralic uh, wines driven by a ripe acidity structure, which is super important for Grüner Wettliner and for, um, for the aging potential of, of our wines. And so we had our issues with, um, with um, tradition. We respect it. It's a cool base. It gives you security. But we also promised ourselves that we never want to fall asleep in tradition. And uh, the same comes when it um, when it comes to to terroir, and also we believe that terroir is changing. Um, although I'm working the the same vineyards like my grandfather did, but um, everybody knows there is something like climate change. Climate was changing dramatically in the last 30, 40 years. Um, as soon as we adapted to organic uh, method in two thousand six, like Matthias Hager, we realized that the quality of soil is, is changing and all of this has an influence to your wine to your culture to your vineyard and at the end to the to the wine you have in, in your glass now and this is what keeps us alive this is what keeps us motivated for the future um, never stop thinking drinking exploring the camp tell and um, yeah this is what i wanted to tell you today thank you very much Thank you, Alvin. 
Thank you, Alvin. It's uh, how do you like it, guys? How do you like it? Hmm? Good. Thanks. The best wrestling. Okay. Right. And already on Instagram. Okay. Great yeah. one. Mostly it's, it's just a little bit actually what we do. Main focus is the, the groomer in in all different styles from, from sparkling to village um, to, to the different um, Erste Lagen wines. And also there we are searching on the one side working on the on the super classy side but on the other side what stephanie my wife who is selling master and me what we like very much what we need also for inspiration this is this free jazz um, section of the cellar when it comes to to natural wines and uh, skin fermented uh, greeners but for today it's about all the classic Great. thank you thank you alvin thank you you did it and you haven't had a trial session, which is uh, means you are okay. Sorry, there was brave guy. <laughs> brave guy. No, you did it. You meant it. <laughs> Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm uh, really impressed by, by your wine. And, yeah. Thank you. Right. Uh, so now this is Stefan Rosner. And yes, uh, uh, just forget to tell, uh, forgot to tell you about the last two wines. So the Yolanta wines, Yolanta's wine is 12 euro price and uh, they do not have an importer by now. And the uh, Alvin's wine is, uh, the importer is Teruarishchi. So Teruarishchi, uh, Teruarishchi from Warsaw, Teruarishchi. Okay, Stefan. Hello, good evening. Hello, everybody. Hello, Pierre. Hello. So this is your time. Super nice. Um, also, um, good evening from my side. Um, my name is Stefan Rosner. Um, me and my family, we make wine uh, here in Langenlois. So uh, some other wineries uh, before in this uh, presentation. And um, we also make mainly uh, Grüne Wettliner. And then Riesling is our second uh, most important variety. But we do a bunch of different stuff also um, from different white wine varieties, uh, more aromatic uh, things, and uh, up to uh, uh, cool climate, the red wines. And the most recently, we also uh, tipped into the sparkling wine, which is very promising uh, here in Langelois because there's a lot of really good producers uh, for sparkling wine. And probably you've already had a chance to taste uh, some of the sect here in Langenlois. Um, to the winery itself, we go five generations back. We are a very uh, traditional family business. Um, what is uh, also interesting is that my father, who is in this picture also in the in the back there, um, he already um, changed to organic. Um, well, he started in 2006 and then we were certified in 2010. And uh, this really gives us a, a good base to make um, really good terroir driven wines. Um, and I myself, I'm in the winery now fully since 2014, and I'm also responsible for uh, making all the wines and uh, for working in the vineyard. So uh, pretty hands on. Um, well, what is special about us also is that we uh, work completely in an underground cellar, so in a very traditional cellar. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture here right now, but uh, you've already seen some traditional cellars here. And what's so special about it is also that we can uh, store our wines in a naturally cool cellar at 11 degrees. And this is very, um, very special because um, we don't have to waste any um, CO2 on energy uh, and our wines are stored perfectly, perfectly cool. Um, well, then I actually yeah, invite you to, to pour in your classes. Um, I brought you another Riesling uh, this time. Uh, directly from Langenlois, from the Ried Hasel. Um, if you also look it up on the map here in Kamtal, uh, we have to distinguish between two different Hasel. So there's one in Strass. This is not it for, for this wine, uh, but it is the Langenlois Hasel. And the Langenlois Hasel lies uh, exactly or more or less between um, the Kieferberg and the Seeberg. And it's kind of a, a terrace, terraces uh, site, uh, very broad, kind of a plateau almost. Um, 
basically uh, what we do here is uh, what the vineyard itself basically is not uh, very well known for Riesling. But what is very special to us as a, as a family business is that uh, in the Ried Hasel, um, we have our oldest uh, Riesling vineyard. And this is a vineyard that my grandfather has planted uh, more than 50 years ago. And uh, this makes it very special because uh, a Riesling uh, vineyard in general is very adaptive to the soil. So it really brings out this, the characteristics of the soil. But then also it needs to be an old wine to actually show um, its, its potential. And uh, talking about the soil, so the Hasel is basically a, a less based soil, but with a higher um, proportion of clay. And uh, you can also find rocky elements in, in deeper layers. So it is quite interesting. Um, and what is also worth mentioning is that uh, it is a completely dry farmed uh, Riesling vineyard, which is uh, very special um, because of the less soil base, um, that the soil retains the water quite good. And so there is no need even in drier years uh, for irrigation. And this is also why the, why the vines are very uh, deep uh, rooted into the soil. Um, yeah, when making the wine, basically, we, we kind of pre-selected a little bit, depending on the year. But in 2019, we did. And um, we kind of harvest the uh, premature uh, grapes just for for village level Riesling. And then we leave only the really healthy grapes on the on the wines. And these grapes are picked later then, so about one or two weeks later. And what we also do is we don't want any botrytis in this wine, so it's completely uh, healthy grapes. Um, after picking the, the grapes uh, are on the mash um, together with the stems overnight. So it's mostly about 12 hours. And then we um, press it the next morning and after wrecking it once. So it's also nothing added. So no, no enzymes and, and no fining or nothing. Um, we kind of rack it away into, and this is here, partly oak and partly stainless steel. Um, I'm working with uh, Austrian oak old barrels, 500 liter, and uh, still building up my oak barrels. This is why I also decided to kind of put half of it uh, in 2019 into stainless steel, uh, just because I really don't want any um, recognizable wooden flavors in the wine. So I think if you know it, you can kind of find it in, in the back, but um, I think it's still it's still uh, very reasoning characterized in the nose. Um, yeah, basically also the, my single vineyard wines, uh, so 2019 is now the most recent one and they stay on the lease for um, about one year. Then we rack it off, um, leave it in the stainless steel tank for another time just before bottling and then we uh, filter it and bottle it uh, in this case. And if it's possible, we also bottle single vineyard wines unfiltered. Um, yeah, uh, about the taste, I mean, the best is you just taste the wines, uh, the wine yourself. Uh, basically, the, the the soil type kind of brings out a more peach fruity Riesling. I think also in comparison to Heiligenstein gives you more minerality, I guess. Uh, so the the Hasel gives you more of this expressive peach fruit, and uh, in the back it's a little you know bolder. I would I would argue uh, just because of the soil type. Um, yeah, acidity normally is not super high, but in 2019 we were quite happy with with um, with the acidity. I think it's kind of well balanced, and also 2019 for us was a really nice year where we had um, a lot of um, yeah sun hours basically, but then still rainfalls at the right time, so we never really got a really stressed plant like it was, for example, in 2018. Um, so from a winemaker's perspective, we were quite happy with the result of this one. And yes, I wish you uh, a good evening and nice tasting. And hopefully I see you sometime in Austria or in Poland or yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, the price of this wine is 17 euros. Yes. And this would be the, the, the retail price, including all taxes in Austria. Including all taxes in Austria, 17 yes. euros. Okay, okay. How do you like it? Green tea flavor. Green tea flavor. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Let's wait for some other comments and yeah. let's speed up because it's 
7 p.m. Thank you. And now Gerard Dime. Gerard Dime. And Thank the you. last wine, number 12. Wine good to dime. And good balance. Good balance. This is the comment on your wine on the chat. Gerard Dime, are you with us, Gerard? Well, uh, now it's yes. Good. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, Hello. So we hear you, we see you, and uh, this is your time. Yeah. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Um, dobry. Um, yeah, I'm Gerhard from Gerhard Dime in Schönbergam Camp. So, um, yeah, we had a lot of different single vineyards from the whole area by now. And yeah, we're about to finish this virtual wine tasting at the northern part of the Kamtal. So we are in Schönberg am Kamp. Um, yeah, we are, our winery is a, like a very typical winery of the region. So it's a um, family winery. It's my my parents and I working together. You can see them on the pictures, on the picture. Yeah, we always look that happy. We never have conflicts, we never fight. Um, yeah, we're a family winery and um, we're actually a pretty young winery. Um, so 30 years ago, it was still a mixed agricultural farm with like um, only some vineyards, some fields, some forests, um, but also like pigs, chicken, cattle. And then my father in the 90s specialized in viticulture and also some beekeeping, so making honey. And when he met my mother, who had some vineyards as well, they only specialized in winemaking and at the beginning selling um, wines to regional customers and selling some grapes. And now we only focus on like making our own wine. Um, yeah, as I said, we are located at the northern end of the, the region. So um, Schönberg is, um, the, the, the microclimate here is slightly cooler than in the rest of the Kamtal. Um, Schönberg is in kind of a valley basin. So we are, I always say we are surrounded by three little hills. So on the west and on the northwestern side of Schönberg, you have the last foothills of the, the Waldviertel. You can see it from here. So we are looking from west to east. Um, so on the eastern side, we have the so-called Mannheitsberg, which is the geographical border between the so-called Waldviertel and Weinviertel. And north of Schönberg, so the, the, the vineyard, the hill with the vineyards, is the single vineyard Kalvarenberg, and it closes the, the this valley basin of Schönberg to the north. So yeah, the Schönberg area is only opened to the south, so we get a lot of warm air from the Danube region, also from the southern Kamtal, and mostly, of course, from the Pannonian basin. And during the night, just because the valley is really narrow, we get a lot of cold air from like all these different hills surrounding Schönberg. And here the contradiction between the day and night temperatures is pretty high. So I would say even higher than in other parts of the of Austria. Um, yeah, so um, in kind of like style of wine we produce, we try to focus on um, producing wine, wines which are characterized by, by their origin. So it doesn't matter if it's a white wine, a red wine, if it's a village wine, a single vineyard wine, we always want to try to express the um, typical flavor, I would say, of the northern Kamtal. So in this term, it would be like wines with a freshness, crisp wines, um, wines with a lot of drinkability, but still very elegant wines. And yeah, you can try the Riedierbling. already opened it. And it's actually one of the, like Schönberg, of course, it's one of the most northern vineyards in the Kamtal. Um, it's on the foothills of the Waldviertel region. It's um, about 320 to 300 meters above sea level. And the soil is mainly sort of nice. In some parts you can also find slate, which is pretty uh, special, I would say, in, in our area. And um, so, um, yeah, it's actually pretty good for Riesling. So we have here, for our single vineyard wines, we always use the like of course the old vineyard and in this case it's a vineyard which was planted not only in one year because back then they didn't have machines and it's very stony and um they was they were like carrying all the stones out of the way 
And so the first part of the vineyard was planted in 1960, the second one 1962 and 1965. And so we have very old wines, which is pretty good actually in this case because, because it's a very demanding soil. Um, so in dry years, it gets pretty dry up there. And But 2019 was pretty good, good because like um, Stefan already mentioned, it uh, was very warm year, but we still had rainfalls um, just always at the perfect time. So we never really got too much stress in the wines. And yeah, old wines, of course, always de develop very small berries. So um, we don't get a lot of it, to be honest. And we just, yeah, pick it. It's usually Riesling is always picked in two, like uh, two times. Um, sugar below 10 grams. If it's for me, it's yeah, it's definitely below 10 grams. So it's around um, five, six grams. Um, yeah, so it's picked by hand, of course. It's then on skins for like with Stefan's Riesling, it's overnight. So it's 12 hours up to sometimes even more. And then it's just pressed straight away. It's always usually it's fermented in stainless steel. Some years we also add some um, barrels we usually work with 500 liter barrels just because we have many different um, vineyards and many so we only don't only have like one big vineyard in one single vineyard we have many small terraces many small parcels in different single vineyards and with the small barrels with the small 500 liter barrels we can like accompany the wine or actually every single terrace from picking to um yeah developing until bottling and yeah and i think in this case in uh, redeabling um just due to the very demanding soil and um yeah to a year it's a very precise riesling with a lot of like peach and apricot flavor but also with a slightly spicy flavor so yeah hope you like it i already see piotr in my picture so that means that i have to stop uh soon no uh, no no, 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 it's just Piotr is appearing. No, yeah. it doesn't mean you, you have to stop. No. No. Okay, tell me, because I, 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 I haven't noted it, uh, the price. It's price. 1850. 1850. So, like, Excelador of the... 1850. Yep. Okay, 1850 euro. Right. How do you like it? This was the last one. So I like it. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I like it. Ah, some comments coming. Peanuts. Peanuts. Oh. Does it taste like peanuts? Is it good or bad? I like peanuts, so. Mm. And winemaker. Super and winemaker means winemaker is super. Pin butter, yeah. Peanut yeah. butter, yes, peanut butter. Ah, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, perhaps, yes, I agree. Right. Well, this, uh, this was the way we started November, the most busy month. So just, uh, just uh, I believe it was a very good, tasting and thank you very much Gerard uh, uh, um, really waited very long to the to the uh, as you are the last one but uh, yeah thanks for, thanks for everyone to waiting for me but yeah thank you super wine friends thank of you. mine would say I'm always late but this is <laughs> not my fault <laughs> thank you thank you well right. ladies and gentlemen last wine and uh, the the last of the end of the first session uh, tomorrow, Weinfurto. In uh, one week, uh, Cyprus. Then Aegean wineries. Then Cava. Toka Renaissance Cava. So, you know, stay with us. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and still, don't forget, use this. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for your patience. And uh, see you, some of you, or most of you, see you tomorrow. Yes, I don't touch it. 
Yes, I do not touch it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Gerard. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.